Hello and welcome to this CBT Nuggets training series on exam 1Z0051, Oracle Database 11G, SQL Fundamentals 1. My name is Tim Warner, and I'm happy and grateful to be your instructor. Our agenda for this introductory nugget is as follows. What is Oracle anyway? What brings you to this course? What do you hope to get out of this training? I'm going to do my best, without being face-to-face -face with you, in answering all those questions and more as we set the stage for our learning. I'm also going to teach you how Oracle certification works. We're going to understand how the current exam fits in with the Oracle Certified Associate and then above that the Oracle Certified Professional and Oracle Certified Master certification titles. I'll then describe how I structured the course and give you some tips and tricks for how you can approach the training for maximum benefit with the least amount of time investment. And then finally we'll close this nugget by examining the 1Z0051 exam to depth so you know what you're getting into prior to actually sitting for the test. What is Oracle? Oracle is a relational database as well as a relational database management system. Whenever I give instructor-led training, I always like to ask my students, what brings you to this course? And that's what I'll ask you to think about right now. Why are you taking this training course and what goals do you have on the other end? Are you looking to pass the certification exam? I take it that's a major goal for many of you. Are you brand new to information technology? and you've always had an interest in databases and you figure since Oracle is a market leader you might as well start there? Are you already in IT and transitioning into a database administrator or DBA role and your shop uses Oracle? Or perhaps you may currently work for an IBM DB2 shop or a Microsoft SQL Server shop and you're transitioning your back-end operations to Oracle Database. Lots of different possibilities, lots of different reasons for coming into the training. By the end of this training you'll have all of the skills necessary to pass the SQL fundamentals test, you'll be fully conversant in the structured query language, and you'll learn a few things along the way about the Oracle database platform specifically. Let's look at some necessary vocabulary that's going to carry us forward. First of all, what is a database? A database is defined as an organized collection of information that's treated as a single unit. A relational database is a specific type of database that stores data atomically in the these units or objects called tables. And of course, a table is nothing more at base than a series of columns, also called domains, that describe discrete characteristics of some set of data. And each row or record in that table represents individual specific entities tracked within that unit. The relation fact comes in that we can cut down on data redundancy, we can reduce human error, and we just improve the overall efficiency of our database by linking tables together most commonly on the basis of one or more matching fields or columns. More on that later. Bottom line is there are alternate database schemas out there but by and large in information technology and in business today we're talking about relational databases. Oracle is certainly a market leader. IBM's DB2 is another. Microsoft has SQL Server. Oracle purchased in the last few years Sun Microsystems which gives us MySQL as as well. Now the differentiation between a relational database and a database management system or DBMS is largely semantic. A DBMS, strictly speaking, refers to the software that's used to store, protect, and access your data. Strictly speaking, you don't need a DBMS to construct a database. You could use Microsoft Visio or UML applications to create what are called entity relationship diagrams or ERDs that map out the structure of a relational database in terms of what your table layout will be, what your columns per table are, which matching columns define relationships among tables, etc. The DBMS takes that entity relationship schema that you've created and puts it actually into a meaningful context where we're storing data in files, we're protecting that data using access control technologies, possibly encryption, and most importantly we need to be able to intelligently access the data and that's that's where the structured query language comes in. This is the de facto data access language for relational database systems. Finally, we have the database application. Most of the time you'll find Oracle is not used just on its own, but rather Oracle database is used for the backend storage, protection, and access of your core data. But then what's presented to your users is some sort of what's called a front-end application. And this could be a desktop application that's installed locally on each 
user's computer. It could be a Microsoft.NET program, it could be Java, the list goes on and on. And using various network connectivity methodologies, that front-end application communicates back and forth, writing to and reading from Oracle Database on your database servers. Most commonly now in the 21st century, you'll find that the front-end application takes the part, or should I say takes the form, of a web browser. We have the thin client on the front end where a user doesn't have to have software explicitly installed. They would interact with your database or data-driven application through a simple web browser. So in sum, a database application is a line of business program software that interacts with Oracle Database. Now, how do you get these LOB or line of business applications? Well, some businesses build their own from scratch to suit their needs. For instance, several years ago I worked for a company that specialized in managing home loans. So they developed their own line of business application. It was a web application that read and wrote to Microsoft SQL Server database in this case. But you get the idea. They then licensed their software to banks all around the world and were very successful. Oracle themselves has made many acquisitions over the last several years. Some really popular business applications that rely upon Oracle are now actually owned and managed by Oracle itself. Two that come to mind include JD Edwards, which is an enterprise resource planning or ERP software package, and PeopleSoft, which is known principally, it's expanded more recently, but historically has been known as the de facto human resources management software package, also called HRMS. Now that we're all on the same page as far as what Oracle Database is, let's take a look at the Oracle certification programs. As I told you in, in the introductory whiteboard for this nugget, there are three main titles. The baseline title that we're concerned with in this series is called Oracle Certified Associate. Now, understand that Oracle has a pretty wide certification portfolio. That's simply because Oracle owns a lot of different technologies now. We're constraining our discussions to what are called the Database Administrator or DBA titles. Thus, the OCA job role is going to be an entry-level Oracle Database Administrator. To become an OCA, you actually have to pass two exams. One is the SQL Fundamentals 1 test that we're learning in this this series. Two is the 1Z0052 exam, also called the DBA1 exam. I've created training for CBT Nuggets that covers this exam as well, so you can use CBT Nuggets fully to provide wide spectrum 100% coverage for the OCA skill set. If and when you decide to up the ante and move to even more lucrative waters certification wise, the professional level title that Oracle offers for their database is called OCP. Oracle certified professional. Now the entry requirement to this is that you hold a valid OCA. So there is a logical flow to how Oracle builds its DBA certifications. Besides passing the 1Z0053 exam, also called the DBA2 test, and it does serve as a bookend to the material we cover in the 052 skill set, Oracle requires that you take a training course through them, an authorized instructor-led classroom course or an instructor-led online training course. That's extra money, unfortunately. Their top tier, when I say there, I mean Oracle's, top tier credential is the Oracle Certified Master, or OCM. There, yet again, the entry level prerequisite is that you hold the OCP. You have to shell out not for one, but two official Oracle training classes. And then there's the Master Exam, which as of this recording, in June 2011, costs $2,000 USD and is actually a two-day performance-based exam, where you're actually performing D DBA tasks in an Oracle lab environment. That's pretty rigorous. In fact, this whole OCM track is a huge investment in time and money. So you always want to consider ROI, return on investment. What do you hope to get out of attaining Oracle certification? At the entry level, at the OCA level, it might be just something to put on your resume and allow you to meet screening requirements for jobs that you're interested in. That is to say, there may be a prerequisite for a contract or full-time or part-time time job that says you have to have this level of Oracle certification in order to work. Once you get up to the OCM level, that's pretty high level, and in my experience, most of the time your employer will pay for this, and I hope you're fortunate enough to find yourself in that level of beneficence. In my introductory nuggets, I always like to take a couple minutes to explain my instructional methodology, in other words, how the course is laid out, how it works, and how you, the student, can use it for maximum benefit. First of all, please take comfort in the fact that I designed
designed this course to go bullet point by bullet point to Oracle's published exam objectives for the 051 exam. I'm a test taker myself, so I know what it feels like to be preparing for a particular certification exam and to be wondering in the back of my mind, am I covering all bases here? Will I see any surprises when I go into the exam room? So know you're in good hands as far as content coverage is concerned. Another suggestion I'd make is that you progress through the Nugget movies sequentially. I know there's a temptation to quote, get to the good stuff and just start skipping around, but you're going to lose the instructional flow that I've put into the course by doing that. I mean, if that's really how you want to learn, I have no problem with that. But just by best practice, because I like to build content and stack content, you may find if you don't watch the movies sequentially, we'll be taking for granted later in the course skills that were fully fleshed out and introduced earlier. You see what I mean? Another option is to make use of the audio capability of our CBT Nuggets courses. If you have a streaming subscription, you can download this course in MP3 format and then put that on your smartphone or your audio player and listen to the training on the go. Especially when you're studying for a certification exam as broad and deep as Oracle, I find that immersion really helps. Some customers aren't aware we have the audio option, so I wanted to make you aware of it now. Final suggestion is, more so than some other certification programs, the SQL skill set here on this exam is pretty darn practical. That is to say, you should practice along with my demos to make sure that you're really understanding not just the theory behind Oracle SQL, but also you repeat the tasks enough to where you develop some innate muscle memory, or should I say mental muscle memory, as far as writing SQL code. You're going to need that when you take this test, and you'll certainly need your SQL skills as you proceed to the DBA1 and possibly DBA2 tests. I've placed all of the SQL script files that I use in my demos on nuggetlab.com, so definitely make a point to go up there, download those files, and you can use them and play along with me during our demonstrations. Our final subject before I take you briefly out onto the web to show you some relevant websites is a list of metadata concerning the 1Z0051 test specifically. Now, what makes this SQL Fundamentals 1 exam unique when compared to the vast majority of IT certification tests is not that it's computer-based, heck, most of them are, but the fact that the 051 test is a non-proctored exam, which means that you can, once you pay your registration fee, take the exam on demand, in other words, at your computer, at your convenience. That's a great convenience on its face, such that you don't have to trek to an exam center at a particular date and time. On the other hand, it's a different way of thinking. To be taking an exam as expensive and important as an OCA test in an environment that you may not be used to taking that kind of a test in, namely, let's say, your home or your school, takes a little bit of getting used to. Yes, we're talking about the honor system here, but the time is pretty aggressive and the questions are pretty complex. So in my experience, you're definitely going to be hopping through those 70 questions and hopefully not have any unanswered questions as your two hours expires. So I'm letting the cat out of the bag a little bit. All this is publicly available information at the Oracle website. We've got 70 questions on the test. You have two hours to complete with a very reasonable pass mark, 60%. The thing I've found personally about Oracle exams, understand I've taken, we're talking triple digit exams with all sorts of vendors, so I have a really wide body of experience to draw from here, is that the Oracle exams can be really, really picky, as if some brainiac at Oracle University sat down to try to think of the most picky questions he or she could. It's kind of annoying, actually. That's probably this pickiness that I observe is going to be a little less prevalent in the SQL Fundamentals test than the DBA1 because the material is so tightly focused. I mean, either you know SQL or you don't. Now, this pickiness is counterbalanced by the fact that the pass mark is among the lowest for any IT certification test I've ever taken. So I think Oracle will cut you some slack in that regard. And so you have a pretty good chance, in other words, of passing on your first try. The exam is priced about right as far as most entry-level certification tests, $125 per attempt USD. 
You register for the exam at pearsonview.com forward slash oracle. I'll show you that in just a minute. And the best tip I can give you without violating my non-disclosure agreement or NDA is to just make sure before you schedule your test, you can perform the exam outline. That is to say, the published exam outline that I built this course on. Make sure every one of those skills listed. <laughs>